Hey guys, welcome to this live session. Shridij on Shoot Guru, and today we are going to be talking about filmmaking basics. And today's session is powered by Hollyland, and uh, Hollyland makes these amazing transmitters, receivers, which allow us to do wireless transmission feed. What you see here is also a transmission where the camera is a little away from me. It's not that close. I'm using a tele lens to make it a little closer, but uh, I am wirelessly broadcasting it over here. I will be monitoring all the uh, questions. If you are uh, going live via the website, if you're on Shoot Guru website, down below you will see the question box, uh, the comment box where you can actually come and put in your comments. Uh, we are keeping an eye on the comments so that we can uh, reply to any of the questions that do, that do come up. Uh, just go to uh, shootguru.com slash live. That is where the comment section is and that is where you will be able to ask us questions. Uh, we are not monitoring the questions on YouTube, uh, mm -hmm. but rather we are monitoring it on the website. So do come over to the website that's shootguru.com slash live and you will be able to see us much clearly. Uh, we are going to go, uh, we're going to start now. Just give me one second and let me just uh, share my screen as well. Cool. Just let me just full screen. So uh, we are talking about filmmaking, and more specifically, I am talking about travel filmmaking because that is something you guys can start off right when you start uh, creating films. That is when you uh, start, uh, you know, creating content for yourself. Uh, that that is where you should be looking at. That is what you, know, you should be looking for because uh, it is the easiest content that you can start producing right in the beginning, and right when you actually start uh, shooting films. Uh, hey guys, guys who've joined us on YouTube, please head over to the website that's shootguru.com/live. The comment section below will be monitored for questions. So please take a look at the comment section and do put in your comments as questions and we will take them up during this uh, live session today. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. Do not be afraid to ask because maybe the question you're going to ask is going to help a lot of other people who are uh, joining in as well. So today we are going to be talking about an intro to the travel filmmaking world and the concept. How do you build a concept? What do you do when you're working on the concept? What is the pre-production that is actually needed to uh, do a travel project? And what do you have to take care of? And pretty much whatever I am talking here uh, will be uh, also be focusing on a lot of uh, when we talk about content where uh, if you're creating content in documentaries creating content in uh, corporate in creating content in terms of uh, short films a lot of this process can be utilized in all of these places and we will be taking up uh, a lot of uh, q a after this as well and there is an opportunity for you guys today who are attending this live session to come and collaborate with us i will be announcing the basic requirements for any collaboration towards the end of this live session. And that is how you and I can work together this year or maybe next year. So let's start working towards better projects. Then we will talk about elements of a travel story. Yes, travel does have a story. Introduction to short types. What are the basic short types that you need to take care of when you are uh, shooting? Uh, travel content, some things that will actually add value to your productions, kind of shoot setups, what are the kind of cameras that we use, so the latest technologies, latest trends like I am, I have here is a vlogging camera that's mounted onto a, a basically an octopad, this is for vlogging, I, I can keep it and mount it anywhere I want, 
Uh, it's a very handy, small little camera. It shoots 4K as well. Uh, it's a micro four thirds. It's a G100 from Lumix, which is very, very decent. And I will also be talking about uh, somewhere uh, about technology in terms of wireless broadcasting, because we are in a day and age where we need to keep social distancing. Hence, and uh, we could be uh, moving around with smaller crews as well. This is where wireless broadcast technology comes into action. And this also helps you in events and everything. So this is a Holy Land transmitter right here, which allows me to wirelessly broadcast full HD signals to anywhere and everywhere onto HD screens. And what you see here also is a broadcast signal uh, being transmitted onto my laptop via a transcoder and an HDMI cable, uh, but the camera is set up at a distance and which is allowing it to be broadcasted uh, onto the screen. Then camera settings that you need to have to have the best results. There are some things that you need to take care of. And of course, what are the post COVID precautions that you need to be Focusing on when you are uh, doing your travels, when you are planning your switches onto my laptop via a. Uh, sorry about that. I'm kind of monitoring questions as well. So uh, I will be monitoring all the questions that pop up uh, on the uh, Shoot Guru website. And uh, the Shoot Guru website, the page is shootguru.com slash live. If you're already here, go down to the comment section and put in your comment right there and let me know if you're there or not. We're just going to start in one minute. Guys, let's just get into it. Let's start. And again, welcome to this uh, live session. And I'm going to be doing a series of live sessions. This is the first of. Next week, we are going to be talking about sound. How do you record great sound on location? And also, how do you record sound for vlogs? And for that, we have our sponsor, which is Deity right here. I will be actually uh, be talking about what kind of mics you can use, what kind of uh, different kind of sound equipment that can you use. Can Do you record on camera, off camera? All of that, that will happen next Friday. So next Friday is sound on location sound and what can you do with it? So going ahead, <clears throat> first we have to understand what is travel filmmaking. Well, for me, travel filmmaking is the process of expressing a place. What we are doing is we are telling the story about a place. We are telling the story about a location. We're telling story about wherever we are and whatever we are trying to talk about. Now, what happens in travel filmmaking is you go to a place, you talk to the people there, you, you tell about the place itself, you have food, you have culture, you have so many elements that you can actually look at and that you can actually work with that you are able to create stories. It is all about human interest stories. The more human interest that you bring into these uh, films of yours, the more attracted audience will be to your content. So you have to understand what kind of content that you are creating and what kind of pre-production is needed when you are doing any kind of content for that matter. First and foremost, you need to have a budget. You need to understand where your money is, money is coming from. You need to understand where, what is your spend power. You need to understand where you are going to actually spend your money and how you're going to do it. So the process of getting money together is very, very important. You have to also allocate funds and resources to anything and everything that you do. And you have to make sure that you 
create your budgets well in advance so that you are able to process them perfectly. Then you have to define your audience. You have to understand who you are creating this content for. And I say this again and again, I talk about this in literally all my workshops. In our course, we have a very specific session. We have like hours of sessions only on audiences, only on content creation, only on content ideas. And that all comes from who you are creating this content for. Is your audience somebody who likes to watch montages? Is your audience somebody who likes to, you know, uh, get information out of videos? Is your audience who likes to uh, just watch visuals and be mesmerized by them. So you have to understand what kind of audience are you actually targeting and what kind of audience will you be creating that content for. Once you've decided who that audience is, once you've decided where their audience is coming from, you will be able to clarify your message. You will be able to work on the messaging part of it. You will be able to work on the content uh, uh, I would say the content composition part of it, where you actually bring in all the elements that would attract these people, that would bring these people together and then make them watch the content that you have so nicely published for them. Then finally, you have to research. And the best place, which I love about, and I love teaching about this places, let me just open that website, is Vimeo.com. I love Vimeo.com. Now, Vimeo.com has given me the power of kind of developing content on the go, kind of researching about what I need to produce, working towards what I need to produce. And so when you land on this page, the first thing that you see is join now, see our plans and all that. Don't be worried about it. It's not a paid platform. Now, what you have to do is you have to go to inspiration. Well, we are here for inspiration. So you go to inspiration. You go to watch. Once you click on watch, you will come to this very amazing page with loads and loads and loads of videos. And the best bit, the first and foremost, the best bit is the staff pick. Now, what the staff pick from Vimeo is that there are real human beings who are watching content, who are uh, kind of going through and curating this content for you. They pick up award-winning films, so like films like here. If I just zoom into that, if I can, just give me one thing. Yes, I can. So if you see right here that these films have these logos attached to them, that means these films are doing very well in the filmmaking circuit. They have uh, got a good uh, recognition. They've maybe won awards. There is so much that these films are doing in the circuit and these films are recognized. They have won something, they've been successful. That is why they are here. So these films usually, you know, are award-winning films with great content and you can watch with them. You can pick up the genre that you want to watch your films in. If you are a documentary th uh, person or you want to watch some comedy stuff, you want to watch COVID-19 related content, maybe you're doing a film on that, you were doing a film on Black Lives Matter, uh, branded content, sports, uh, drama, travel. Now, travel inspirations are so beautiful over here. There is so much, so much beautiful content coming from creators around the world that kind of comes together into this category right here. I click on the travel category and I will get into it wherein it will showcase me all the work from creators. There are over 306k videos, that's 3 lakh plus videos available to you for inspiration. And guys, these are some amazing, amazing videos. I, when I started filmmaking, when I started my career in filmmaking, I actually started like this. I got inspired by filmmakers uh, from around the world with the kind of content they were creating and utilizing that content, using that content, I was able to, you know, develop my content, uh, uh, some content of my own, develop stories of my own, work on visuals. There are tutorials available on these pages. There are you you can actually go and talk to these creators. Just DM them, just email them. They will reply back. They will tell you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. And utilizing all the, all the content that you gather from them, all the information that you gather from them, you will be able to create some amazing content of your own. 
then start writing guys get into a habit of writing it is very crucial why because if you are a traveler if you are somebody who is into travel filmmaking you are going out of uh, your comfort zone or you are going into your comfort zone for that matter and creating content you need to know what content you are creating what is the storyline because that will help you create your short list that will help you create your uh, pre production list that will help you get into the production directly you will not be confused you will not be worried about what shots to take you will not be worried about where to go do your research properly look for current photographs that's the best way to do it go to instagram click on the location tag the location tag will give you the latest pictures that people have been posting of that place look for the latest pictures maybe it looks very different from the travel website that you went went to and that is a mistake that people make a lot of times people end up going to places without researching about them and they end up kind of wasting time wasting resourcing resources wasting money there is so much involved when you are creating a film it's not just your you creating content it is actually basically you creating some very beautiful content in the end then you need a short list you need to understand what you're shooting you need to make sure that you take care of the shots that are needed to complete your film always have a go to list always have a confirmed list that you need to follow follow that list you will never miss out on shots period always have a short list never get into uh, a film production without a short list then get permissions guys permissions are very very crucial because if you're flying drones or you're shooting on government properties like asi properties you need to have permissions you need to notify the local uh, people involved in terms of security because what happens is that if you don't do that you end up wasting time by just debating with them even if you are right so just make sure that you notify all the authorities involved in your a project and the place that you were at i remember there was an incident recently last year we were in mp and uh, we were in gwalior we were shooting for mp tourism imagine that i was actually shooting for mp tourism and what i realized when i reached there was that we had not informed the local authorities now that should not have been a problem because i had written permissions but i ended up facing the security guards who said that i was not allowed to shoot because i did not inform the local authorities present there at that moment and because of which we were not allowed to shoot the first day and our whole first day got wasted i was literally banned from all asi locations in mp because they had notified everybody and i'm a very easy person to identify they had notified everybody that i would be there shooting maybe with some camera equipment or something a gimbal a tripod so they would said please do not uh, allow him to shoot and that is why any place i went post that incident they would stop me ask me for permissions ask me whether i informed the local authorities or not and which became a very 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 big issue for us so always always be sure you have permissions and notify local authorities determine your equipment needs if you need a camera a single lens that's it move ahead with that you need wireless transmitters add that to your arsenal you need a tele lens like i'm shooting with an another camera body work with that you need lighting get lighting you need additional some get some but what if you don't need most of these things do not carry unwanted equipment never ever carry unwanted equipment for one simple reason you will end up carrying unwanted weight that will in the end result into you kind of you know carrying excessive baggage or even at times getting into accidents where you could actually break or you know damage your equipment which is very very unsafe so be very careful that was a realization what i got when i was shooting for swiss tourism about 2 years ago and um i was going around switzerland using public transport and i was carrying a bag that was i'm not kidding you that was literally 
I would say about 20 to 30 kilos. And because I had my tripod hanging onto it, I had big lenses hanging onto it. I was not using a very light ecosystem. I was using third party lenses for my Lumix cameras. Uh, I was uh, I had a monitor attached with a wire all the time so my director could move with me. If I would have had a wireless transmitter at that point in time, I would have actually given her a wireless feed and I would have asked her to kind of, you know, stay on the side where I would have my space to shoot, even though I loved her being there. But still, uh, sometimes you are stuck with people that you don't want standing right next to you. But in any case, if I had known the kind of equipment which was needed, if I had known the kind of equipment that would allow me to be a very light traveler, I would have taken that and I would not have actually wasted my energy and my time and not destroyed my back, which I still face the heat for, the back still hurts. And at times, you know, it gives you fatigue as well. So it is very important for you to even take care of your health by reducing the whole weight in your equipment bag, the whole weight that you're carrying along with you. Then when we were talking about defining your audience, we already talked about, so talk about platform, just make sure that you know where you're publishing your video, just make sure what genre you're publishing in. What are the preferences of your audience? What is the kind of content that your audience really likes? You have to understand that every person has their own choices. Every person loves a particular kind of uh, content. They would ha they have their own preferences. They have their own likes and dislikes and everything together. So be sure that you understand all of that and then start planning for your content. Set a view duration. Now, view durations are very, very important. Now, why is view duration important for one Simple reason, you will have to shoot that much more if you are shooting a longer video. Let's say if you're shooting a one minute video, so one day of shoot works. But what if you're shooting a 20 minute film, then you can't finish your shoot in one day until unless you're just sitting in front of the camera and yapping out, which is not what your audience will like. So if you are looking at a 20 minute film, you should be at least looking at five days of shoot, three minutes per day or four minutes per day is an average that you would be shooting. And that is the kind of content you should be targeting because that would mean quality. So get your audience right, select your platform, uh, get understand what kind of audience you're targeting, understand the characteristics of your audience, what kind of things they like, dislike, and then start planning your content, which is very, very crucial and important. There are elements to a travel story. There are elements to a travel film. These elements actually happen in all the films. There has to be a beginning, a middle, and an end. Now, when it comes to travel films, you have to be very specific about what do you establish, how do you put it forward, and what kind of content you're creating. You're heading to a location, right? That is why people are coming to your video. If I talk about traveling to MP, I need to show Madhya Pradesh. If I talk about traveling to Amsterdam, I will talk about Amsterdam. If I talk about traveling to Punjab, I will talk about Punjab. I have to talk about location. I have to establish the location. This is where your drone shots and your wide angle shots and your time lapses and all of these come into action. They just beautify the first appearance of your uh, visit to any place and establish the place for you. So the location needs to be established. Then you head towards the people. Now people are very important. Human interest stories bring humans to your videos. They will make sure that your videos look beautiful. They will make sure uh, that your uh, videos have stories. They will make sure that your videos have a human connect. Humans like watching humans. It's not that you're doing a wildlife documentary for discovery, then it's a full different ball game altogether. We will do a film, uh, workshop on wildlife filmmaking and photography as well, sometimes this month. But right now what we're talking about is travel filmmaking. When we talk about travel filmmaking, it is all about location and people. You need to establish character. Your film needs a character. The place could be a character or you identify somebody who becomes your character. So all in all, you have to understand where you are gathering people uh, content from and whose story are you really telling? Who is the person you're really talking about? Who, what is the place that you are really talking about? So all of this needs to be understood, needs to be connected together and you know, brought in to create content for your film. 
you have to have a narration. The narration could be a voiceover. The narration could be somebody talking, somebody giving an interview. The narration could be literally anything that tells a story and that tells people what you are all about, what you are talking about and how you are talking about that. So you have to understand when you are talking about people, when you're talking about place, you need to understand the place. You need to understand the visuals of that place. And you need to tell the story in a very, very different fashion every single time. It can't be just random visuals put together and expect your audience to, you know, just uh, talk about things. So I'm going to show you a film which is very, very dear to my heart. Um, I love this film. We did this for uh, MP Tourism. And uh, this uh, basically uh, is very dear. Why? Because this, the shot the film starts with is a shot that was taken by chance. I did not plan that shot. I had no idea uh, what was happening with that shot, with that uh, lady at that point in time. And I just rolled the camera. And that was just purely in the moment, purely uh, in the uh, space and uh, in, in, in the time that we were there, uh, that we were able to capture it. And it looks beautiful once it came out over here. So here's the film right here, right now. One sec. Kutta se ka bolte? Dog. Dog. Billy se ka bolte? Cat. Ka bolte? Cat. Machi se ka bolte? Fish. Bakr. Murga se ka bolte? Hand. Murga se chicken. जो बुंदेलखंड एरिया सूखा एरिया है यहां पे उतनी बारिश नहीं होती है लोगों का फार्म जो है जो जितनी फसल है वो सही नहीं हो रही है पानी की कमी की वजह से तो हम लोगों ने कुछ सोचा कि कुछ हम कर सकते हैं शुरू में इस पेंटिंग को दीवारों पे बनाते थे बाद में जब इनको बताया गया कि आप इसको पेपर पे भी कर सकते हैं then उन्होंने फिर इसको स्टार्ट किया यहां की औरतों के लिए कुछ काम नहीं था तो दादी वगैरह ने भी किया बुआ जी ने भी किया ना तो बुआ जी से हमने सीखा कि भैया लेके आते हैं वो दिखाते हैं उन्हें पसंद आती है तो लेते हैं मेरे को कोई नहीं मैं अपने दिमाग से चकाई बना लेती रस्सी भी बना ले चूल्हे चकिया सब बना लेती इसको मालूम है कि कौन चीज कहां में आते चले फैमिलीज में आर्ट है और जो खत्म होती जा रही है उसको हम लोगों ने थोड़ा बचा के रखा है और हम लोग चाहते हैं कि साथ को और आगे तक लेके जाएं सो दैट वाज एक्चुअली अ फिल्म वी डिड फॉर एमपी टूरिज्म लास्ट ईयर आई होप इट डिड नॉट लैग टू मच फॉर यू गाइस बिकॉज़ एट times i'm very it's very hard for me to you know stream uh, films uh, without lag uh, but i am finding out ways i'm trying and testing some new technologies uh, there is a technology by, by that we use called yolo box i will be using that for my next live wherein uh, we will have a multi cam setup because for my next live i even have somebody special joining us uh, it's a surprise for everybody we will have a guest speaker along with us next time and since we are talking about audio so we will have an audio specialist in studio uh, who will talk about their experience in recording audio on the actual field so going ahead so that was the film that i just uh, shared and guy by the way guys this uh, film uh, this workshop will be available for you guys to view on the shoot guru app 100% free and all the content we are turning into 100% free except for the main 
courses, uh, which are the longer courses, but the short workshops and everything, we're trying to get them to uh, get sponsored so that everybody gets them to view from, uh, for free. And we are heading towards an affordable education format. And that is the idea behind us creating more and more content as we go ahead. So some basic shots when we talk about travel. If you have, uh, guys, if you have any questions, please, please, please uh, don't hesitate and just uh, ask uh, in the comments below. I am monitoring those comments. Uh, I keep refreshing the page uh, so that I get to see more and more comments. The only two comments that are there are mine uh, at the moment. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions, just put them down there. Uh, I will take them up. Now there is one more question that's come up. Uh, do we need permission to fly DJS Park? No, we do not need permissions to fly DJS Park. It is a non-commercial drone, but three very big no-nos with drones. One, never fly on government sites. Not even two kilometers to five kilometers of the government site should your drone be seen. Two, stay like zillions of meters away from any defense sites. Now, these could be army camps, it could be air force camps, it could be anything. Please don't go there. They're very dangerous. They have the power and the permissions to shoot your drone and you down if they feel that you are a threat. Third, if you are flying commercial drones, make sure that you follow the permissions on the map Never fly in red zones, stick to green zones only. And if you're flying in yellow zones, make sure that you're in a safe place and please do not take off from land in crowded places and make sure that you have a clear line of sight that your drone is visible wherever it, you are head, uh, taking it. Never take a chance of not uh, having it in your sight. That could be very dangerous, not only for you and your money flying in the air, but rather uh, dangerous for people if it lands uh, in a wrong way or somebody meets in an accident. Because of that, guys, not at all safe. Be very, very careful by not doing it. So going ahead, well, there are some basic shots in travel. The first is establish the location. Establish where you are. Establish what you're doing. Establish what you are talking about introduce the place to uh, people, introduce uh, the, your story to people. The story could be the place, the story could be people in that place, introduce that, bring it in, introduce your character, uh, introduce uh, the character of the film, the character of the location, the character in person of person. Like for example, the film that I just showed, the lady was a character for me. She is the one who started the story. She is the one who's binding the story. The story is about people who are working from home in these areas. The, the stories are about these people. The stories are about uh, how they are earning a livelihood. And that is what we were focusing on. Create moments. You don't have to direct people. You just have to be so candid and let people be in their own natural way that you will be able to create moments. The conversation between a grandmother and her granddaughter was so special and so unique. I did not ask her to ask those questions to that kid. Neither did my director. We didn't know why the child was in the frame in the first place. The child that came, he sat down, we were setting up, we set up the camera. We started rolling the camera because I wanted to take uh, some sound checks and all of that. What I realized is that there was a conversation happening on the other side because I was monitoring sound. Now, once I was doing that and the conversation went to a level where you saw when she was talking to her grandchild and asking her grandchild some really interesting questions about how what some things are said in English where you would not expect it from a rural setup. But that came out so well, that came out such a beautiful storytelling that till date, that is one of my most favorite films that I talk about. Then get B-roll. You need a lot of B-roll. You need a lot of cutaways. You need a lot of shots for your montages. You have to capture food. You have to capture nature. You have to capture shopping. You have to capture the core elements and the highlights of anything and everything that you are focusing on. So be very, very creative about B-rolls, but creativity also means consuming time. Please work towards getting your core needed shots first and then go ahead. 
time lapses, hyper lapses, slow mos, and tracking people takes a lot of time. You need to do retakes. You need to wait for the correct lighting. You need to have the correct uh, compositions. These time taking shots should be left for right in the end. It should be left for uh, the after the core shots are finished, after your story is finished, and that is when you take these shots. Be very, very careful about flying drones because drones are a time consuming process. Please make sure that you have the right permissions. Please make sure that you have the correct information about where you're flying, what you're uh, flying for. You have your drones registered. Do not uh, fly in uh, no-fly zones. Do not take uh, chances with national security because it is very, very important to take care of. There's another question that I'm going to take up. Uh, how to be the first one to have the uniqueness as nowadays everyone knows everything about places and have videos like Nash Daily. Pulkit, uh, that is a very, very interesting questions where where you talk about originality well you are original there is no such thing as a copy you can't copy anybody you you will be shooting on a different day different time different equipment different kind of thought pattern different mind all together you can't have a copy you can be inspired by things see how other people have uh, created content in the past see what has been a success for them see how that success has worked for them build on it work towards building your success on it don't make the mistakes other people have made in the past learn from my mistakes i always talk about mistakes whatever tips that i'm giving you are or have been mistakes in the past that is why they became a tip so you have to understand that we are here to tell you things not to do. And you have to learn what not to do before you actually understand what you really have to do. So you have to uh, make sure that all your content, all your ideas, everything is put together. Discuss it with like-minded people. Understand, create a community of like-minded people and then work towards creating content with them. That is what your content should be all about. And that is where originality comes in. Believe me, there is enough, there is enough content for you to shoot and for you to capture without losing the core essence of what you really want to capture. So uh, there is a uh, question by Kashish, how to select the right font style in the starting, how to select right transitions from slide one to slide two, okay, from scene one to scene two. Um, is this a question about the presentation? I'm going to take it in the context of the film. Uh, when we talk about film, film has very specific fonts. They have to be clear. They have to be visible. They have to be on solid surfaces. They can't have clutter in the background. So you choose fonts which are uh, legible from a distance. Imagine yourself looking at a billboard, how a billboard look from a distance. Very clear fonts, very on the face fonts. And that is what is kind of font uh, selection you have to do when it comes to uh, maybe creating supers or titles for your uh, content. Guys, if you have any questions, please, please, please feel free uh, and just ask it uh, in the uh, content section right here. And now I'm going to get into something which is very, very fun for me is uh, sharing and talking about gear. So what is that you need to carry? You need a very durable backpack. And what I have here is a backpack by F-Stop Gear. This is my travel backpack. It is ultra compact. It is beautiful. It is waterproof. And the best bit is the access cones are on the side. So what you see here is basically a zip pouch over here to uh, save all my things, a zip pouch on the bottom to save more and two pouches in the middle to have additional things. Then I keep my cameras and the lenses on the other side, the same kind of a zip thing happens on the other side, which allows me to keep cameras, lenses, so I can carry two bodies and approximately four lenses uh, in this kit. Then what it comes with is something which is very, very cool. It comes with a pouch like this. This is one of the best things that you can have. 
and this opens to up like this so you have a, a bigger pouch like a sealed pouch here where you can put in your chargers you can put in your batteries you can put in your memory cards and everything goes here and of course all your wires and your pinups go over here and again this is also waterproof so very very safe very very easy to handle the best thing that i love about this is that it unfolds into something bigger look at that this amount the amount of space i can put into this the amount of things i can pack my uh, clothes in it i can uh, add more uh, equipment to it and that is a very beautiful thing to carry always carry a stabilizer always carry this the other camera is on a tripod i have what oh, you see over here is an octobank this is actually a sandbag support system i use it to record time lapses i use it to mount it on cars inside cars i love uh, putting it inside cars it is an amazing amazing friction enabled so this is friction right here does not slip at any point in time and allows me to uh, work with shots inside very tight spaces then you need a ball head so what a ball head allows me to do is kind of you know mount the camera in any position possible without actually you know losing onto my shot or my framing and i love it when i'm doing time lapses because then i can you know cramp places put your camera up angle it in a particular way and you get a very beautiful composition carry cameras which have inbuilt st stabilization so this one right here is the g100 this is for i would love this for a travel film uh, combining it with some more lenses a uh, decent camera not so great in low light but otherwise very well captured and great stabilization that allows me to shoot handheld shots or if you have the capability carry a gimbal have a gimbal along that will allow you to get more stable movements and even create some amazing motion based shots as well portable uh, uh shotgun mic uh, i love this mic this is one of my favorite mics and i've been using it for a lot of productions lately so this is a d3 pro a little expensive uh, for an indie filmmaker uh, with the on a budget uh, but this could be your one time investment in sound uh, it comes with a tiny uh, uh, like a like a like aux cable kind of a setup and also it comes with a xlr converter for those balanced sounds i love using this for all my productions and it is amazing one thing there is a question as well let me just check that out best gimbal for phone in travel um there is a gimbal by the name of atom and there is a gimbal by dji osmo so dji makes some amazing amazing gimbals and that you know uh, so you have to understand that the technology that dji has brought in terms of gimbals in drones in phone gimbals in camera gimbals is literally unmatched uh, over the years and you have to understand they, those guys are the pioneers in whatever they create hence uh, giving you the best uh, content the best uh, uh, ability to shoot beautiful content then you need to have nd filters nd filters are a great addition because guys you have to stick to 1 by 50th of a shutter or 1 by 100th of a shutter depending on the frame rate that you're shooting on if you're shooting 24 frames per second or cinema you need your shutter to be 1 by 50th of a second because that will give you a natural balanced motion blur then i would definitely recommend a wireless uh, system like this one over here because now what a wireless system really does a when i attach this to any camera i can use my phone as a monitor it has a qr code on the back the qr code allows me to scan uh, through my phone and use the hollyland view app which allows me to use my phone or my tablet or my ipad or anything as a monitor i can you know if your cameras have systems where they have hdmi control then you can actually control your camera using your phone as well also if you are uh, somebody who is in very tight situations maybe has to do interviews on your own then you need to monitor what you're shooting you need to even monitor sound hdmi gives a sound out this uh, these uh, devices give you a sound out as well so you are able to manage and monitor sound more easily and these are very compact very very easy to handle and they have a 400 feet range this particular one is the mars 4 mars 400s which has a 400 feet range 
allows me to get amazing footage in any situation that I am. I can even mount my cameras in places where I can't reach out easily and still get a very beautiful shot. If I'm shooting a time lapse, I can monitor a time lapse uh, without reaching out to my camera and chill out and keep an eye on my footage as well. Then. Get an action camera that works for you. I love the GoPros. GoPros are amazing as action cameras. You don't need water housing. You don't need stabilization also with GoPros these days. So GoPros are a very, very good option. Get a portable drone. Guys, for drones, make sure you get a non-commercial drone because non-commercial drones allow you to shoot without permission. So anything like a DJI Mavic Mini or DJI Spark are non-commercial drones that will allow you to shoot some amazing four, up to 4K footage without any hassle. Then you need to have portable lighting. Now portable lighting has always been very interesting for me because light allows you to add quality to your production. And for portable light, I have this very special light which is literally always with me. This is an MC LED uh, by Aputur. And by the way, Aputur is giving this baby away. This Diwali, they have their giveaway on Instagram. I've just posted in my stories as well. The Aputur India page is giving out an MC LED and a D3 Duo, uh, v Duo, uh, sorry, uh, DT Duo. DT Duo is a vlogging mic. So this is what you need. And what I love about this is the fact that I can add color to anything that I do and it is just mind-blowingly beautiful and this is flicker free LEDs beautiful in color beautiful in terms of features I can actually also add effects like for example lightning party so different colors Pulse, maybe you want to send to Moscow, and of course, cop car. This is one of my favorites. There are a few more which you can pick up, and this little powerhouse is a very, very decently affordable light for what it's worth. It's just mind-blowing. Then you need a lot of memory cards. Guys, get those extreme high-speed memory cards, and if your cameras can do tandem recording, that is recorded two cards together, Please do that because when you're traveling, you need rugged hard drives, you need solid state drives to take backups. Travel films, content lost, you'll have to travel again. I would love to do that, but creating content again and again of the same place, nah, I don't want to do that. So you have to have backups over backups and that it is what you have to be focused on. When uh, Let me check if there are any more questions. Um, people we've talked about a73 or a7 r3 for travel both for photo and video s5 guys do check out lumix s5 i am i have become a sheer fan of the lumix s5 for one simple reason affordability compactness and the technology it shoots 10 bit on the camera it shoots 120 fps slow mo with autofocus it shoots uh, log it shoots uh, dual sd cards it has a beautiful image stabilization and the most amazingly mind-blowing contrast based autofocus system in the world you guys should check it out my review will be out this week if you want to see it or if you want to experience it Come over to the academy. You're more than welcome to set up a slot. Come and shoot with us for a day uh, or experience the camera yourself for a day. And you can, of course, visit the academy as well. Of course, post Diwali, we will maintain social distancing. So book in advance. Are there any more questions coming in somewhere else? Let me see. No, let's go ahead. So whenever you're shooting, make sure that you shoot the highest possible resolution. Shoot 4K. Now shooting 4K is not only because of the resolution it gives you, but also the kind of information and the colors and the sharpness and everything that comes along in the 4K footage arena. That allows you to actually modify your footage later. Why? Because for the next three to four years or five years, I believe that we will still be delivering full HD footage and shooting 4K will only allow us to shoot better. Shoot 24 frames per second if you are shooting cinema, 30 frames per second if you're doing television, 60 frames per second if you want some slow-mo, 
and of course 120 plus frames per second if you want a really really good slow mo but be very careful if you are uh, shooting 24 frames per se second or if you are shooting at any frames per second you have to be sure that you keep your shutter speed exact double so for 24 frames per second the shutter in my camera would actually go to 1 by 48 uh per second uh, of a second but since you don't have that setting go for one by 50 so you go for the higher uh, possible speed instead that will what that actually does it gives you the perfect motion blur that you require for your film that you require for creating some amazing cinematic content always maintain your shutter at one by 50th of a second that will just give you mind-blowing footage that will give you mind-blowing quality and will allow you to shoot way 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 better uh, to manage it in bright light well use nd filters you need neutral density filters you need those filters to create some you know beautiful content make sure you get the best quality because they leave it over uh, they leave a cast a color cast if not uh, chosen properly please 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 be very careful about it so there is another question that's come up what would be a good what would be a good middle camera mirrorless camera something more compact to get and again getting a switching to mirrorless camera is the future it is something that you guys should be focusing on getting into a new camera getting in new technology make sure the technology that you select are uh, some things that work for you uh, in the future but don't burn your bank select an ecosystem that lasts you for a very very long time if you are already a dslr user i and if you're a crop frame user i would actually advise you to switch to a full frame camera and the most affordable and the most amazing one that i am using right now is the lumix s5 but if not if you don't want to go into the full frame space because the the lenses are expensive uh, the whole ecosystem has become expensive switch to micro four thirds this is a micro four, th uh, four thirds camera which is actually running on ambient light and is very decent this is a micro four thirds camera. My 90% of my arsenal is micro four thirds camera. All the content that I showed you uh, is micro four thirds camera. So the quality is unmatched. It is beautiful. It is affordable. The lenses are dirt cheap. A 70 to 200 f 2.8 with IS and uh, OIS actually, uh, optical minimalization would cost you less than 80 grand. Yes, less than 80,000 rupees. The counterpart in full frame costs you 1.5 lakh plus. So you have to understand what kind of ecosystem that you are heading for and what kind of ecosystem will you be actually working towards. And that is very, very, very important. Then I think that pretty much takes care of all the questions. Let's head towards one of the most important things uh, that we will discuss today and that might actually help you guys to, you know, revive the whole uh, business era is business in COVID. What do you have to take care of first? Talk to your existing clients, assist them, help them, offer a helping hand make sure that they're comfortable, make sure that their content is still running, make sure they have a business running by the time everything works out, because if they don't have a business running, you don't have a business at all. So call out to your existing clients, offer them discounts, look for more collaborations. There are other people in the market who are suffering because of COVID. Please look out for them, talk to them, work together, and build relationships. Everything today is built on relationships. Everything today is built on what you can do, how you can do, and how you can produce. It is very important for us to stick around. It is very uh, important for us to kind of understand how and what we are creating content for. I could be creating content for myself. I could be creating content for anybody uh, in the industry for that matter. But you have to understand that the content that you are uh, creating, the content that you are working on should be working in a way it should be making you money. And on that and on collaborations, I have a collaboration offer for you. If you have a film, which is one location, let me just uh, bring that slide out.
just one second i'm opening the slide and this is where i'm offering a collaboration to all of you for you guys to pitch us content Let's share this. One second. Okay. So the one, two, three of collaborating with Shoot Guru. Number one, your concept should be one location-based concept. Rule number two, two days of shoot only. And rule number three, up to three characters in your film. And if you have a concept that you can revolve around this, be it a short film, be it a documentary, be it a fiction film, anything that you want to produce or even a music video, we will be willing to listen to you. We will be willing to hear you out and we might produce it one, 100% without you actually spending any money on producing this content. And that is what we are offering today. We are offering your hands-on experience to become successful in filmmaking and create your first film with us using all the equipment that we have, right from shooting on full-frame cinematic cameras, using cinema lenses, to using cinema lighting, to using everything which is super compact and do a low budget film. So guys, this is an opportunity for you. This is an opportunity that I am offering to you, wherein I am wanting to collaborate with you on this fact. So if you guys have any questions, please, please, please feel free to answer, uh, ask your questions. Just give me one second. I'm going to do one thing. Mm. Let me see if there are more questions coming in. I don't have any questions on YouTube. We don't have any more questions here as well. So guys, again, if you are listening in, if you are watching this video, even if you're watching this video later in a non-live session, please, please, please feel free to pitch in. This is your pitch, your chance to kind of Redeem yourself, your chance to kind of be what you want to do. Uh, I don't know if my screen is visible. It's a, it's a blank screen. Why is it a blank screen? One second. Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to share it again. So if you have a concept that can be shot in maximum two days on one location with maximum of three characters, do pitch it to us. We would love to talk about it. We would love to listen to your story. We would love to listen to your concept and we would love to uh, work on it together so that we are able to produce more and more better content for uh, the future of filmmaking and independent filmmaking in India, which I feel is heading towards darkness as well. Uh, photo capture creation, we will be talking about mics and sound uh, in our next session, next Friday. Next Friday is a session specially dedicated to sound. And I will be showcasing, uh, showcasing all the sound that we have, the lapel mics, the cordless mics, the condenser mics, the uh, boom mics, every single thing. And even uh, kind of showcase you have what uh, kind of quality of uh, sound you get utilizing any of them. But if you do uh, want to collaborate with us, please feel free to connect with us. Uh, this is it right here. Hands-on experience is your key to success. And one location, two days of shoot, three characters. If you have a concept, pitch it. 
uh, our students get this opportunity anyways we shoot a film with our students the same opportunity is given to all our students uh, so if you are interested in the course the course details are available on our website and uh, in the travel film uh, in, sorry in the filmmaking makers program uh, if you are interested go check it out the new batch starts on the 16th and uh, yeah thank you guys for attending uh thank you guys for joining in i hope uh, this was a session that kind of added value to uh, value to all of you please leave a comment and of course subscribe to our youtube channel uh, the website and download the shoot do app which gives you 100% free content always guys take care have fun ciao And we'll grow in number Fueled by thunder See the horizon Turn us to thousands We'll call